Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine Gonzalez and I will be presenting on my organism who goes by the scientific name Escherichia coli and the common name E. coli. E. coli was first discovered by Theodore Estrich back in 1885 after isolating it from the feces of newborn. It is a large and diverse bacteria that is often found in the environment, foods, and intestines of humans and animals. Most strains are harmless, but there are a few that are pathogenic which can cause diarrhea, vomiting, and pains or cramps of the stomach. There is even one strain that can lead to kidney failure if not properly managed. E. coli can be transmitted through contaminated water, food, or through contact with animals or people who have the strain or E. coli in general. So this picture right here is just a picture of E. coli and the bottom picture right here is E. coli streaked onto a blood agar plate. While E. coli can be found in fecally contaminated environments, including water, sediment, and mud, its primary habitat is in the gastrointestinal tract or the GI tract of humans and warm-blooded animals. So here to the left, you can see a picture of the gastrointestinal tract or the intestines and a little zoom in on the inside which where you can find E. coli. E. coli is a heterotrophic organism, which basically means that it receives its food from another source, also known as its host organism. E. coli obtains carbon via biosynthesis of organic molecules, which was ingested by their host. The main source of carbon comes from glucose molecules. These glucose molecules were ingested by their host organism, which are later broke down into usable carbon in three different steps. So the first step, also known as EMP, it's a long name, so I'm not going to say it. In this step, the basically glucose is converted to pyruvate. So as you can see here on the right, um, glucose all the way down is converted into pyruvate, which is the first step, also known as EMP. In the second step, TCA is where acetyl-CoA is oxidized to CO2. Again, if you look to the right, you can see acetyl-CoA being oxidized into CO2. Lastly, we have PPP. This is where glucose is oxidized into CO2. Again, if you look on the right, you can see glucose being oxidized into CO2. Now, I didn't find much predator and prey relationship research or information for E. coli, but I did find a research experiment conducted by some different researchers and scientists. So in this experiment or research, they constructed a synthetic ecosystem consisting of two E. coli populations, which communicate bidirectionally through quorum sensing and regulate each other's gene expression and survival engineered circuits. This synthetic ecosystem resembled canonical predator prey systems in terms of logic and dynamics. The predator killed the prey by inducing the expression of an antidote protein in the prey, while the prey rescues the predators by eliciting expressions of an antidote in the predator protein. So now we have unique evolved traits. To the left here, there are some strains that are non-motile. Most strains of E. coli are motile, but there are a few that have evolved into being not motile. Then you also have where some strains are fimbriated, which basically means they have those little hair-like structures around the rod shape. If you can remember in the first picture I showed y'all in the beginning of the slides, it was just a rod shape. Well, some strains do not have those fimbriated hair-like structures, and some do. E. coli is a rod-shaped bacterium of the Enterobacterial say, family. So here on the left, you can actually see where it says E. coli under bacteria or eubacteria. And on the right, you cannot see E. coli exactly, but it is under the bacteria part of the tree. So one major importance of E. coli and its mankind that I did find was that it actually helps absorb iron. Iron deficiency is a very common problem. It is a major cause of anemia. E. coli is able to make a chemical called entrobactin. This chemical allows it to absorb its own iron. As for the importance of E. coli in the environment, it is wisely used as an indication of fecal contamination of water waste. Lastly, here are my resources, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Bye!